Hello everyone, welcome to the Work Zone Watch Franklin Insider. I'm Melissa Ryerson and this is our facilities manager, Brad Wilson. And we're on the site right here of a very new, upcoming very new. <laughs> fire station. It's fire station number seven. We have eight in the city. And this is on the east side of the city, right near the Ag Center. There's a temporary center there. And let's talk about why we decided to put the fire station over here. I understand originally it was gonna be on the other side of the highway. But when we had that tanker accident about four years ago, we decided to move it over here, right? That's right. And we, uh, the reason that we moved from that side of the Berry Farms that's currently being developed was with accessibility. Mm -hmm. Fire department with the apparatus need accessibility to the main roads. Not a whole lot of turning and twisting, trying to get out of the fire facility to get out, to get on the road, to get to where they need to be. And right after the accident, we decided to put a temporary facility over here so that the residents, while they were repairing the bridge, the residents on this side of I-65 would have fire service. And that temporary building's been up for about four years, and now we're finally breaking ground on the new fire station. Finally breaking down ground, as you know, it takes a little time, but uh, you know, we've, this temporary facility has done its job well, we feel. Uh, it gave the residents and uh, people in the area a little bit more protection because like you said with the bridge being damaged and the other one catching fire they had it was, our response time i think was going to be somewhere around 10 to 12 minutes in some areas without this temporary facility being here so uh, this project went out for bid roughly about six months ago uh, it's uh, right at a 17,000 square foot uh, facility we are partnering for the first time with williamson county ems which will have a single bay of its own which will be designed into based on our design um, they'll have a staff crew there, full-time staff crew there, and uh, just to help with any type of emergency services that are here. They'll also be able to, like our Station 7 over in West Haven was the first that we put a treatment room in there. Station so, 8. Excuse me, Station <laughs> 8, yes. And, uh, but with that, the treatment room has been very successful in Station 8 over there. So That is a very beautiful fire station. If anyone's ever been over there, you might want to go take a look and then the one here um, in on Paytonsville Road, if you're driving over Goose Creek bypass Paytonsville Road, the entrance will actually be on Paytonsville Road, right? It is. It's on straight on Paytonsville Road. Okay, and uh, everyone likes the doors that are at West Haven. Are we going to have those doors over here? The exact structure that we have at West Haven is being built here with the bypass type doors. All right, so we've broken ground. What's the timeline? When can people expect to see some more building and maybe a completion date? Well, as we all know, construction <laughs> problems arise, and we were able, we had to work with Middle Tennessee Electric, Atmost, uh, excuse me, not Atmos Energy, but Comcast and AT&T. Uh, worked with Middle Tennessee Electric trying to get all their structure pulled off of the poles. We've had to rework transmission lines that crossed our site. Uh, also with Comcast and AT&T and trying to get their new facilities and structures put up. And then now we're in the process. I think this week, this coming week, we should start wrecking, or they'll start wrecking off their lines off the existing poles. Okay. And then that'll help us. But t currently right now, we're looking at about a March 20th. Um, March 2020. March 2020. Okay. March 20th of 2020. And I live in this area, and I was kind of wondering, why up there? Why are they doing all the land up there? Does that have to do with the fire station? Well, we had uh, quite a bit of topo that we had to work, but instead of hauling the material off of the site, I was able to kind of work it into the existing site. So with the help of Tim Edwards, our superintendent with Southland, we put about 5,700 cubic yards of material on site. We kept it here. Okay. And we probably, based on our estimates, we probably saved between seven and $900,000. Right. and cost and what it would cost to haul material off the site. Saving taxpayer dollars, that's Saving what we love. Saving taxpayer dollars. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. We'll see you next time on the Work Zone Watch.